That'll be on our uh, website if anybody wants to view it later on, have the sound and everything. It's a pretty well done video. So I think we're just about to 6 o'clock. We want to stay on time tonight if we can. So I want to start the evening out with prayer. So please bow your heads. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, we welcome your presence here among us and in our Bishop Kenny Athletics community. Share with us your spirit of peace and love for one another. Bless us all with the spirit of goodwill. And finally, watch over these athletes, family members, and coaches, and keep them safe in all that they do. We ask this in your name, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Welcome to everybody, especially the future Crusaders out there. It's great to see such a great turnout tonight, and we're excited to have you here. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Mark Thorson. I'm the athletic director here at Bishop Kenny, and I'm joined by Mary Ritter, who is found in Crusader Corner, who's in charge of all of our athletic paperwork. And really, what tonight's designed to do is to kind of give you a glimpse into our athletic department, get a chance to meet the coaches. That's the most important part of tonight. And then we're going to do a short orientation on some of the paperwork um, that we require you to do before you get started called Final Forms. You should have all received an email on that earlier today. So we'll walk you through that. If there's time in between where you may have questions or something that you're not comfortable um, asking in front of the group, by all means, I'll be out there uh, somewhere for the next hour or so. But we're going to keep this moving um, tonight as quickly as we can. I'm going to have all the coaches step up to the front while I give them just a quick uh, format. So if the coaches can just step across here, I want to have faces with names so you know who you're looking at. The format for tonight is between 6 and 6.20, the next 20 minutes here. After I introduce the coaches, as I said, I'm going to go through some quick question and answers. And then we're going to show you the final forms um, paperwork online here. So the first wave of our breakout sessions are going to be mostly the fall sports. So between 625 and 640, you'll find the name of your coach and sport and the room number associated with it. I'll be there and some other people will be there to help direct you to where you need to go. That'll last for 15 minutes. There'll be a five minute break to kind of move back around and then the rest of the sports um, will be represented. That'll give uh, kids that want to play multiple sports hopefully chances to see as many of the coaches as they can. If you don't get a chance to meet them in the classroom, they'll be out here in the, uh, somewhere in the Harris Center. Just uh, step up and, and uh, say hello to them as we get going. So what I want to do is just have the coaches step out. If I miss somebody that's not here, um, then we'll, we'll move on from there. First of all, our head girls cross country coach Jackie Harden. Head football coach is Tim Krause. Head volleyball is Suzanne Winkler. Head boys golf is James Ray. Head girls golf is Lynn Kirkpatrick. Boys and girls swimming and diving is headed up by Laurel Valley. She's at an awards banquet tonight and can't be here, so the swimming staff will conduct the meeting um, in the classroom. Our sailing coach is Dustin Domer. Girls basketball coach is Will Mayer. Boys basketball coach is Jerry Buckley. Girls soccer coach is uh, Mandy Turbergan. Boys soccer coach is Matt Case. The wrestling coach is Paul Schloth. Boys and girls track and boys cross country will be handled by the coaching staff. They'll also have rooms assigned, so you'll see those on, on those uh, podiums as well. The softball coach is Lori Ray. The baseball coach is Tommy Edwards. Boys tennis, James Ray again. Girls tennis, David Doherty. Tim Krause is also our weightlifting coach. And beach volleyball is also Suzanne Winkler. So coaches, you can go ahead and step down and get your rooms ready. Thank you for taking a minute to come up here and introduce yourselves. Okay, before I turn it over to the final forms portion, there's some questions and answers that I kind of want to go through that I often get asked here. So the first one is about eligibility. So the question, are all incoming ninth graders automatically eligible to play sports at Bishop Kenny? And they are. So the way eligibility works with the FHSAA is you're eligible throughout the first semester. At Christmas time, which is when our final exams are, that's when that ends. So in, Jan in, um, in early January, we'll get a list out 
And at that point, that's when the ninth graders must maintain a 2.0 GPA, which is a C average, in order to maintain their eligibility. So there may be some transfers in the room as well from other schools, other high schools. You're not automatically eligible unless your grade point average is a 2.0 from where you transferred from. So as we get your eligibility status to the FHSAA, they'll inform us of that information as we go along. So that's eligibility. Next question, can I play more than one sport? And that's absolutely, the, the answer is yes. We want as many multiple sport athletes as we can. How does that work? Well, we have three sports seasons, fall, winter, and spring. It's very difficult to play two within each season. So you have, kind of have to pick one in the fall, winter, and spring. But we can make that work. Um, you just have to talk to the coaches. So you go right into the fall sport. As soon as that sport is over, you transition into winter or vice versa from winter to spring. So we want as many multi-sport athletes as we can. We encourage that. Can ninth graders play on varsity teams? So I get asked that a lot as well. It all depends on your ability level. So, um, you know, there's special athletes that are more mature, ready to go. I, uh, when I was coaching football, I had John Wolford. You guys may know him. He started as a freshman, but he was, you know, somebody that was a different level. Um, other kids may need a year or two to mature. The good thing is we have JV teams in most of our sports, and we even have freshman teams in a lot of them. So there's developmental teams that will allow you um, the opportunity to move your way up. Are summer workouts mandatory? So one of the things you're gonna go through in these meetings is what's the summer workout schedule? What does that look like? Where do we meet and how does it happen? So I would highly encourage anybody that's gonna play sports to attend as many of the summer workouts as you can. They are not mandatory. That's a, an FHSA rule, I can't make them mandatory. But it will definitely benefit you as an athlete, make you feel much more comfortable, one, with what's expected of you, two, with the coaching staff, and then you get a chance to meet some new friends. And that's really important. So make sure that if you have the opportunity, get in there, get started with them. How about vacations? Can I take a vacation? Absolutely. We're still all about families. We're still all about um, having a summertime. Uh, so if you are going on vacation, the coaches are really cooperative with working with you. You just need to communicate that. Don't just not show up. Okay, let them know I'm going to be here, but not this date, this date, and this date, and they'll get you marked off. Okay? The last one is an important one. Is my current physical exam form valid? It is not. So what you have to do is you have to wait until the 27th, which is Friday, correct? So after, on or after the 27th, then that form becomes valid. There are some extra forms over on that white table over in the corner right there that you can pick up that you can bring to your doctor. They must be done on an FHSAA physical exam form. So you can't bring in a grade school exam or a general exam form that maybe a doctor may have. It has to be done. There's language on there that the FHSAA requires us to cover. So that's um, what you need to do with the physical exam. Now, lastly, some important dates. So today you would have uh, received an email from Final Forms. The portal is open. You can start filling out your forms. Everything can be done except for that actual physical exam. So physicals, once again, must be dated after Friday. Summer workouts for our teams can begin as early as June 6th. Some of the coaches are starting then. Some are waiting a little bit. They'll talk to you about that in those sessions. Our school gets out on June 3rd and then we can begin summer workouts anytime after the last day of school. So they'll go over that with you. August 1st is the first day of fall sports. So if you're playing football, volleyball, cross country, swimming, all those sports that are fall sports, the first day of practice can begin on August 1st. So I know that's early compared to the grade schools. So you need to make sure you're checking your travel plans and making sure that you're um, available to start. A few of the sports, like golf, will wait a couple weeks and they'll start more when school starts um, officially for the ninth graders. They'll talk to you once again about those. And then August 10th is the first day of school for our ninth graders. So that's the day they come in. We'll try to uh, get back out, readdress you guys again to make sure that you're in what you want to be in, that you've been communicated to and feel comfortable with everything that's going on. My last thing, and I'm going to turn it over to Mary, is don't be nervous about this. This is fun, okay? It's sports. It should be enjoyable. I know it's a little bit nerve-wracking going to a new school, meeting new coaches. They're all here to help you. All you have to do is ask. Same with you parents. If you can't figure out the paperwork, you've gone through it two or three times, and it's not working for you, 
Give Mary a call. She'll be glad to walk you through it. We're here to help you. We want to make this as good of a transition and easy of a, tra a transition as possible. So once again, welcome to all you guys. I look forward to the future Crusaders on the fields and on the courts, and I'm excited to meet all, all of you um, at some point down the road. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, like Mark said, I'm Mary Ritter, and I am in Crusader Corner. If you guys ever need to stop by whenever you come in, I'm right here in between the cafeteria and the front office. Um, I'm just going to go over real quick a few little tips um, for filling out the online paperwork. I know it's not fun. You're not probably going to remember everything I say, and that's totally fine. Just give me a call or stop in, and I'm happy to help you. Um, so like Mark said, you should have received an email from Final Forms today. And that um, you can access final forms through that link. The parents should have received the email. Um, so you could access final forms through that link, or you could come to our Bishop Kenny website. And um, we can always access it through our athletics page. And then we'll go down to forms. You'll recognize um, most of this information on our forms page. It's basically everything that's been emailed out to you parents recently. So we're going to go right up here to click here for, to register for final forms. So I've already logged in. Um, you will have to create um, your, your password and log in, your parent account. Once you log in, you'll come to this screen. You'll have your student's name right here underneath the My Students section. We're going to go ahead and um, click on our incomplete forms. That's where we're going to get started. So, this page is actually very important for parents because we need to know that you're giving your child permission to play a certain sport. So you need to go ahead as a parent and select any and all sports that your child may be interested in participating in. Um, so the, the, the child will not be able to select a team um, or a sport without your permission through your account. So once you select your sports, you're going to update. And then as you'll see on our left-hand side, everything is listed, um, all the headlines are listed in red. That means that they are requiring some form of action. Um, so red means that a parent and student both will need to review and sign those forms. Anything that is yellow means that a parent has reviewed and signed, but it's waiting for the student to do the same. And then anything that is green um, means that it has been completed and you can move on to the next item. So, we just have some general basic contact information, health history. Um, I'll go ahead and give you an example of something, um, like whenever it turns green, you'll see it immediately turn green on the left-hand side. So our medications is done, we can move on to the next item. We'll give an example also of something that is going to require a student's signature as well as the parent. So we'll go ahead and do a parent signature on here. Obviously read all of the information before you sign it though. Okay, see how we have it highlight, um, highlighted in yellow. So then what we're going to do is once everything is green, that means you're cleared and ready to move on. Um, we also have some items that um, will require a little bit more attention. Um, it will be our mandatory courses for athletics. The FHSAA requires um, the coaches and the student athletes to um, view and take a test on three different um, videos or courses, heat illness prevention, um, the sudden cardiac arrest and then concussion um, in sports. So what you'll have to do, this is going to unfortunately take you to a new website, NFA, ugh, NFHS Learn, um, and you're going to register in a, for an account here. Um, once you register for that account, you'll be able to watch the video and take the course. Make sure that whenever you are registering, though, you register with your child's name because the child will need to not only view and take the, te the course test, but also their name needs to be on the course certificate at the end. Um, you'll want to make sure that you save that course certificate and the ID number because the parent will then have to go back to our, our, our courses and you'll have to enter in the certificate ID. Yeah. 
Yes, the students will be the ones that have to view and take the test for each of those FHSAA courses. Yes, the parent. Yes, the parents can view it, but we we must have the the child participating the whole time. Um, and then just a couple couple other things. Um, the physical sports physical, as Mark spoke about, we have the copies over there if you need to take one to your doctor. Um, make sure that they are. Um, are taken on or after May 27th, and then you have to turn those in, physically hand the hard copy in to me in Crusader Corner. I'll make sure everything's notated um, and you're in the system. Um, in addition to the sports physical, you'll also be required to um, take a concussion baseline test, and that is for our JOI trainers. Um, that's just to kind of give us, give us a, a baseline, something to start from if there was an injury that had occurred while you were playing. Um, let's see. So once everything is green on your left hand side, you're good to go. I think that's about it. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thank you. Does anybody have a general question? I got time for one or two. Yes. They cannot, all this stuff has to be completed or they cannot work out. So physical must be on file, all the paperwork completed, all the courses and exams completed before they can work out with any team. So you really have two weeks here um, until the 6th to get all this done. And students, athletes, those videos are 20 to 30 minutes each. The concussion baseline test is about 30 minutes. So you're talking about a couple of hours um, that are required. And this is required of all of our returning athletes too. It's FHSA um, mandates by the state legislature. So it's stuff that we've got to follow pretty closely. As far as the concussion baseline test, the concussion baseline test now requires you to be pretty focused. And there's step-by-step -step directions on that and how, to be done, how it needs to be done. But if it's not done correctly or if uh, multiple incorrect answers indicate that the test is not valid, you have to retake it again. And that happens quite often. So really pay attention. You don't want to do it twice. There's all kinds of different uh, quizzical things that get you going on that thing. So really take your time, be in a quiet room, um, and focus so that you don't have to do it two times, okay? Mary would, would email you and let you know if for some reason your test is not valid. I have time for really one more question about final forms, and I'll be there available. Anybody else have one? That, that makes sense to anybody? Okay, one more thing. Sorry, That's sorry right. guys. Um, just to clarify, you will see a concussion video embedded in final forms. That has to be done, and then in a, a second additional concussion baseline test, which is required by JOI, that also has to be completed. So there will be two concussion forms that you'll be looking at. One's a video and one is an interactive type test. We will more than likely send those directions for the actual baseline, the one that they have to interact with, tomorrow or Wednesday. So we'll email that out to you guys so they can take it. They can take that at any time as well, okay? La last thing with final forms, and then we'll get on to the meetings with the coaches. Coach Buckley just uh, gave me a good point. Like our internal email at Bishop Kenny is, uh, will spam some of this stuff that we get from final forms. So if you did not receive that email today, check your spam first and then call Mary Ritter tomorrow, okay, if you did not receive it. That way um, we're on top of it. We can check in with them and get it all taken care of. All right, now for the coaches portion. So when we walk out of here, once again, the bathrooms are through the back corridor past the, cha uh, past the stage. All of the different breakout classrooms, if you watch my hand signals here, the 500 classrooms are all to your left through the doors, straight through, as are the 400 classrooms. The learning commons, which is where football and boys basketball are, are through that stage. There's a sign down there, which will take you down there as well. There is uh, cookies and some refreshments on the tables. If you're not going to the first session, just hang out for 15 minutes um, and, and uh, meet some new people, I guess. Uh, then the, the second time around, you'll be included in those. So for this portion of it, um, once again, I want to help you if there's any questions, so see me afterwards. But go ahead and make your way to those classrooms. If you have a question where the rooms are at, the coaches will help you out. Thank you so much again for attending tonight's orientation. <laughs>